Good afternoon. My PhD topic is improving outcomes in acute life-threatening emergencies. Uh, my name is Gergő Vilmos Szabó. I'm an emergency physician and working in Székesfehérvár in an emergency department. And as you see in two different uh, pre-hospital workplaces also. My vision is implementing new approaches and making unproven conventional treatments obsolete by providing scientific evidence that could improve outcomes in emergency care. And the mission is to provide scientific evidence to prove the above and implement evidence-based patient care in on a wider scale in my prof professional environment. To achieve uh, this uh, mission and vision, I get uh, two specific goals. The first one is the useful enough of, of a bedside ultrasound, and the second one is the best type of uh, infusion in diabetic catecholosis. So let's focus on the first one. The title is Point of Care Ultrasound Improves Clinical Outcomes in Patients with Acute Onset Dysma. It will be a systematic review and a meta-analysis. In this slide, you see the status of my manuscript. Uh, in this month, I sent uh, the internal review. My target journal is a uh, JAMA Internal Medicine, which is a D1 journal. We know that uh, when someone is admitted to the hospital with the acute onset dysma, uh, it can cause a high 30-day uh, mortality rate. Uh, the differential diagnosis, what we learned in the university, like uh, inspection, auscultation, percussion, and uh, waiting for the, the laboratory results, and in, in some cases, waiting for the consultant from uh, different uh, experts, uh, can often be time consuming, and it uh, may lengthen hospitalization. So this uh, conventional approach uh, delay treatment. Uh, but we know that POCUS uh, can enhance uh, early treatment, but the evidence is answer uncertain or, or uh, it was uncertain. So my aim is that uh, our study uh, will assess the efficacy of POCUS versus conventional approach on the um, outcomes what I show you now. So you see my PICO, the P is patients who is admitted with acute onset dysmia or get into this condition in the hospital setting. The intervention arm is a POCUS, and uh, it means a, a bedside ultrasound modality, which is not made by a radiologic expert, but an um, uh, intensivist or an emergency physician or anyone else. The C is the conventional diagnostic methods when we do not use this POCUS, and I show you my uh, outcomes. So we made a uh, search from uh, 11, more than 11,000 articles, we found 14, which were suitable for data collection. And I want to show you my six outcomes. Uh, this first one is time to diagnosis, measured in minutes, which is essential because when someone is in dysmetic condition, it is the first step to make a quick and, on the other hand, appropriate, uh, adequate uh, diagnosis. So uh, according to these uh, numbers, you can achieve more than one hour time reduction to make a diagnosis when you use POCUS, in, in contrast not to use it. But you see the heterogeneity is so high because uh, the patient population was not the same. What I mean in some studies uh, included just children, in other uh, they were excluded. Um, other problem is, uh, in some RCTs, uh, focusing on patients who are admitted to the ICU or others uh, on the emergency department. But this result is significant. After the diagnosis, we can begin our treatment. So you can reuse uh, the time to treatment nearly half an hour when, we, when you use POCUS, which is, uh, again, a significant and clinically important outcome. And uh, the length of stay, especially when we're focusing on the intensive care unit, is uh, also uh, crucial because we know that the ICU is often so dangerous and the expensive part of the hospital. But uh, according to this result, uh, we can achieve more than one uh, day time reduction when we use this attitude in uh, contrast to the conventional uh, diagnostic uh, modalities. After that, I want to show you my secondary outcomes. 
uh, rate of appropriate treatment. Um, with the low heterogeneity, we could present you a significant result. And uh, according to this slide, we can state that you can give your patient more than 2.3 times higher odds to receive an appropriate treatment when you expand your uh, examination with the POCUS, which is, I think, a huge result. The 30-day readmission rate, there's a tendency to, to reduce uh, it, but we did not uh, achieve uh, the significance level. And my last uh, outcome, the in-hospital mortality, we, uh, we, see, we can see again a tendency uh, in the reduction of odds ratio, but uh, as, as you see, one article show a uh, different result as the others, that is the Laurzan, which is a brilliant uh, RCT, but all the examinations were made by one person, so it's some kind of bias, and it's uh, more or less an order study. So we made a statistical method to figure out whether it is a bias, and we uh, found that yes, it is. So we made a leave and out analysis, and after that, uh, we found that there's a 50% reduction in odds ratio to die in a hospital when uh, we uh, did not use the POCUS. And this result is significant. So to sum up, uh, we found uh, more than 5,000 patients, but we had problems uh, with the uh, heterogeneity. So uh, the conclusion that POCUS seems like a preferable modality as first choice to make differential diagnosis and early appropriate treatment. And the in implication for practice, that all patients who is admitted with DISMA should be examined with POCUS. But of course, further, uh, more homogeneous and uh, uh, better prepared studies are needed um, where examiner's qualities are more precisely uh, defined and uh, the POCUSs are similarly pr protocolized. Um, my second project is also a systematic review and uh, meta-analysis. It's still just a working title the effects of 0.9% uh, saline versus balanced crystalline infusion on the resolution of diabetic ketoacidosis in adults. And I want to present you just the progress of my second project. Uh, I'm working on the data extraction, and after that, uh, we, we can continue the, the forest plots, the great assessment, and so on. And uh, um, so both my my uh, projects focusing on uh, uh, acute life shortening uh, emergencies. The first one is the bedside ultrasound modality, and the second one is the best uh, infusion in diabetic cardioacidosis. Um, and I uh, want to uh, thank you for your attention. Um, instead of the, the official uh, quote from my professor that diagnosis can wait, but science cannot, yes, that is true, but I want to show you another one. Uh, there are situations when science can wait, but family mustn't. Uh, that is my baby who arrived from the hospital yesterday. So I'm very happy, and I wanted to <laughs> assure it for you. What kind of uh, ultrasound protocol do you use? at the emergency department. In association with DISMA or in other conditions? Because there in are case the specific... Of yeah, yes. In, in DISMA, yes. Okay, the, the Vorpicelli uh, method, the blue protocol, which means a uh, bad side lung ultrasound. We focusing on a uh, six uh, area of the lung and uh, evaluate the, the, the B, profi B profiles uh, and so on. Yeah, that is the the most widespread, as I know, but there are perhaps others also. You didn't pre present data on, on uh, the, uh, the usage of uh, bedside ultrasound uh, globally. So what, what is it like? How is it widespread? It? Yeah, 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 yeah. It depends on uh, which area of the world we are uh, discussing, because uh, uh, in a... In a rural part of the countries, it is not uh, not uh, achievable as like in centers. 
I mean, on the other hand, and on the second, uh, it's, a, it's a strange uh, data that uh, in countries which are not, uh, not rich, uh, we can use it in a, in a wider aspect of the patient evaluation uh, because, for example, CT is, is not uh, achievable, so is, is not, we, can, we cannot use G, uh, CT 7 per 24, so we can uh, use uh, POCUS also uh, to, to evaluate fractures, uh, free abdominal fluid in shock, and so on, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's not so, it's, uh, it's cheaper than like CT. Thank you, it's very demanding study. I think the first project, and so I have a two question. First is, is there any existing systematic review and meta-analysis that's published recently first? And the second, um, is there any possibility to measure or like taste the diagnostic accuracy of this ultrasound focus? Because there has to be a lot of reasons that lead to acute dyspnea, for example, like fluoral effusion and also heart problem. So, May that may lead to like, maybe increase that's your impact factor. I mean, the, your publication, mm -hmm. so. It was not our plan because there are a lot of uh, high quality meta-analyses focusing on the diagnostic accuracy of POCUS. So we do not do it. As I know, there is now ongoing, but there's a, from the previous year, another one, yes. I'm totally not familiar with uh, POCUS. Could you explain uh, what is the limitation of it, uh, the resolution of, compared to the uh, standard of care? Mm -hmm. Is it reliable? I, Which I is think the, the limitation? highest limitation is the question when and who to use it. Uh, there are studies that uh, a beginner resident with two days practice can use this attitude as uh, accurate diagnostic, as diagnostic accurately as a radiologic expert. But when we uh, use it with a, with a, uh, with a bad uh, indication, so we are focusing on questions which are clinically not relevant, we can uh, lengthen the time to, to treat our patient. So I think that is the, the most important clinical question. Of course, there are other limitations with the, the resolution, with the price, but it's it's a easy, it's an easy way to use it. So some hours you can, some hours handheld hand uh, practice you can use it. Thank you.